So it feels like I'm I'm inadequate to show my my little win, my little my little five thousand dollar win, because I've I've been focusing a lot on now in the new year. One of my resolutions was to focus more on small field type of play, single entry three max, but it doesn't have to be three max. It could be ten max, but a little bit higher stakes. Like this is the hundred dollar. This is the smaller hundred dollar showtime. So it's a three hundred and thirty field 330 player contest it's a single entry but i'm focusing more yesterday i i played cash and i played five lineups and i played one i played the mid-range jumper the 40 dollar. i played the main showtime basically i played the 250 the 100 the 100 and the 240s and i just hand built uh five lineups i'm i don't need an optimizer for that i i hand built for so long that I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need a tool to do it for me. The tool is there just for for efficiency's sake. So here's my lineup, and uh, people wanted to talk about uh, like how did I get to the lineup? Okay, first off, get projections. Okay, I can't do any of this without without RG Premium projections. You could sign up to Premium, RotoGrinders.com/slash/Premium, or click on the link in the description. And uh, you get $10 off your first month. If it wasn't for the projections team, the projections team are the basketball people. They're the model people, right? Jamino and his model, great. And then you got Meansy, you got Tuttle, you got SBK, you got Reeves, you got Alan Lem, you got you got a put- Dodo. They know, they, they're looking, anytime there's a new starting lineup, anytime that uh, we saw yesterday, Paul George, he's questionable. Uh, what happens then, Right. You know, uh, how many minutes is someone going to get? You know, like those types of things, how much usage. Now that now that George is out, Kennard's going to be in the first unit. Now who's going to get the usage in the second unit? Like that's what they're figuring out. That's what our team at Roto Blinders does. I trust them. So I wait for them to update the projections and then I just trust the projections, right? So they're going to put in the minutes. They're going to figure out the usage and everything. And then the model is going to go through all the predictive variables and, and give me the range of outcomes of the simulation and boom, there you go. So like without projections, I can't do any of this, right? I don't look at matchups. I don't even know the totals of the game most of the time. I don't know the spreads. I don't know who's going to blow out. I don't know any of this. I just, I just, I just look at the projections. That's, that's why you get that answer. When people ask me about players, they're like, oh, you're, uh, you're being a bit of an asshole by saying, you know, look at the projections. Like, dude, that's what I, like, that's what I would look at. Like that's, you know, ask, ask Andy. Ask Andy a basketball question. Me, I'm I'm a uh, the names on the spreadsheet person. So if you're gonna tell me, uh, if you're gonna ask me, uh, who do you like, uh, C.J. McCollum or uh, D'Angelo Russell? It's like oh, whatever the whatever the projections say. Right there's the answer sheet for me. That's you could you just go straight to the horse's mouth by doing this. So this this was the hundred dollar uh, Showtime and uh, hand built lineup. See, you could win. See, I like the fact you could win with snowflakes, even in, in the smaller field stuff, right? So, and also you don't have to get like super, you know, I didn't need Jared Allen, right? I didn't need Jared Allen. I, I didn't need, I didn't even need Kawhi, right? I, I didn't need like, so I didn't need, well, I needed Hernan Gomez. But you like, you don't need like the, the 2% owned guy that gets 50 points. In large field, you do. In large field, you kind of have to have the nuts to, 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 to some extent. So, uh, so thought process. So yesterday... Okay, we, we had two interesting things yesterday. Yesterday, we had uh, Durant being out, but we knew that, right? We came in, we came into the slate, and we knew Durant was going to be out. So, but the thing is, is that we didn't know what the next starting lineup was going to be, right? We Like, before the slate start, we're going, okay, it's going to be Kyrie, it's going to be Joe Harris, it's going to be probably Jeff Green, uh, DeAndre Jordan, we don't know. Maybe Levert doesn't start. Maybe Levert is the guy off the bench, but he closes the halves. So we kind of have a, a sense of that. And then they, the Nets announced the starting lineup. Joe Harris wasn't in it, right? Bruce Brown comes from the dead, right? He DNP'd. He didn't even play. He wasn't even in the rotation, and now he's starting. So now you have to figure out what the hell is going on. You have you have Irving, you have Brown, you have uh, Torian Prince, Jeff Green, and Jarrah Allen starting, and you're going. Oh, is Joe Harris just not playing? Is 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 he coming off the bench? You, you have no idea. So now, now everything's up in flux. Now people are just asking, you know, what what the hell's going on? So you know, our team just got together and said that, you know, who knows what this minutes the the variance on these minutes could be ridiculous. 
So, yeah, you could play Bruce Brown. You could play Torian Prince. You could play, you could play Jeff Green. You could play a lot of these guys, but, like, that range of outcomes is going to be much wider. But I knew that the Nets were going to be popular, right, because of Durant being out. And I knew, like, uh, like most people, like, the, the chalk build would have Kyrie and Jokic because the center position yesterday was kind of, you you played Ed Davis for value. I mean, like, that that's how bad it was. People played Ed Davis. I mean, I played him in cash, but, I mean, people played that. So most likely you're going to see Kyrie Irving and Jokic lineups, which means that mid-price centers, because most people were going to either go up to Jokic or go down to, like, an Ed Davis type, Jeff Green in the, in the center spot. So, and in the guard spot, people were going to go up to Kyrie Irving. So that was the construction that most people were going to use. And then fill out cheap nets. Cheap nets... And T- Horton Tucker, I guess, right in a in a, a shooting fo- a small forward spot, because he he wasn't horribly projected. It's a five game slate, uh, so basically all of the other higher priced guards were going to be under owned because of that. So guys like Lillard, McCollum, DeRozan, well DeRozan's now at, at forward positions, uh, Russell, like all those types of guys, Levine, White, Levine was owned though, so Levine. It was somewhere in the middle of ownership. So, like, this is where, like, leverage exists. So, if you don't play Kyrie, then you're most likely not going to play Mitchell or Gobert, right? And you're probably not going to play the cheap Nets either. So, it's kind of like, how do I X out that game? Do I play that game or do I X out that game? I wanted to get off the chalk construction of basically Kyrie plus Jokic, cheap Nets, right? And then fill it out. Like, that was going to be the kind of the chalky years type of stuff. I could probably go down and find, here's Empire Maker, right? He uses his, he uses his cash lineup and everything, right? So this, this was the chalk build, right? Obviously, now Leonard, once he swapped off, we'll talk about that in a second. So this was the chalk build, or like playing like four nets, three or four nets, Ed Davis, Jokic, you know, this was the build. So when, when, when you're playing GPPs, you need to identify what the chalk build is, because that's what you're leveraging off of. Like, a lot of people think in terms of, oh, I'm going to play exactly this, and then instead of playing Torian Prince, I'm going to play P.J. Dozier. Like, you're not getting much leverage doing that, right? It's the same lineup, just with another guy that's only going to score 15 points, right? Oh, well, if, if, if P.J. Dozier scores 17 and Prince scores 13. That means I win a GPP. No, you're, you're only leveraged off of like one person on the line. Like you didn't do anything. You really didn't gain that much by doing so. So you take a look at this type of lineup. People wanted single entry advice. This is very good for hand building single entry and just learning the concepts so that when you are playing 20, 50, hundred entries, you could tell the optimizer how to build these types of lineups. So it's not a matter of the optimizer doesn't tell you what to do. It doesn't tell you what to do. It's only a calculator that you put in the inputs and then it does whatever you want it to do. So when you're saying, oh, I'm getting a lot of this guy, it's like, it's, it, it doesn't know. It's like you're based on your constraints and your groups and your settings. Like that's, 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 those are the highest projected lineups based on you, based on that. But you have to tell it that, well, in my Kyrie Irving lineups, don't play uh, Donovan Mitchell. Right, that type of thing. In these type, don't play Jokic and Irving in the same lineup. Those those types of things you have to tell it. It doesn't know. So I look at this chalk construction. I look at this chalk construction and go, okay, well, if I'm gonna fade, I'm gonna either fade one of Irving or Jokic, right? I don't want to be part of this this chalk construction with all this ownership, right? Levine, this is in a single entry, right? Forty seven percent of Kawhi. 40 on Levine, 41 on Jokic. I mean, like, Torian Prince was 42%. Jeff Green was 37%. It's like, how do I avoid? I was thinking in terms of how do I avoid cheap nets? So I'm like, okay, let me think of how I could build by avoiding cheap nets. But then by doing so, I need to play guys like Horton Tucker, Batum, and Hernan Gomez. Okay? So if I just, I can't fill this in, I still need just a, a shooting guard. Right? I'm still stuck with a Bruce Brown there, right? I'm still stuck because if I keep this construction, like I, 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 can't, I can't play one of Irving or Jokic by avoiding cheap nets. So I have to decide, am I going to fade Irving or Jokic in this lineup, right? I decided since I'm fading cheap nets, why don't I just fade all of them, right? Why not just fade them all? Well, fade a 53% on Kyrie Irving for 
there were ceiling guards available. I mentioned all those guards. All those, yes, Kyrie was projected higher. But not to the extent higher that Kyrie is 53% owned and McCollum is 20% owned and Russell is 13% owned, right? Does Russell beat Kyrie? You know, does Kyrie beat Russell you know, four times more often? No. I mean, it, he beats him more often, but not four times more often. So I thought there was more leverage at the guard spots. So that's why I take Kyrie out of the lineup. I go, okay, if I'm not playing Kyrie, I'm not playing cheap nets. That means I'm probably not playing the Jazz either, right? Right, because they kind of correlate in the same game. If Kyrie does well, Donovan Mitchell probably does well. And, you know, you hope for a blowout or something, which ended up happening. Or the production gets spread out or, or whatever. So, so I got rid of that game completely. So now, okay, now if I got rid of that game, how do I build my lineup? So I'm like, I'm going to need, I'm, uh, okay, so I'm going to, if I'm going to play Jokic in the center spot, because I faded Kyrie, so I don't need to also fade a 41 point, a 41% owned Jokic. So I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to play Jokic, I should play players on the other side of the game. It's a five game slate. There's not much, many options. So I need a, I need cheap guy. I need a cheap guy. Okay. Give me Hernan Gomez. He's on the Wolves. He's opposed to the Nuggets. Give me one of those leverage guards. Off of Kyrie Irving. Give me D'Angelo Russell. So now I have my little 2-1 little stacky stack here. Russell plus Hernan Gomez plus Jokic. Right? Because I decided to play Jokic. So this, if I played Kyrie, then I probably wouldn't have played Russell or Hernan Gomez. Right? It would have been cheap nets and Gobert there. So here you go. So Jokic plus Russell plus Hernan Gomez. And then I think in terms of, okay, well, uh, I want to play Levine or White. And I also want to play Lillard or, or McCollum, the, the, the guards that will get less ownership because Kyrie Irving is, is chalk in that position. So what fit in this lineup was McCollum plus Kobe White, right? And Kobe White was less owned than Levine. So that's kind of a little, a little bit of leverage there, right? And then, you, then at that point, you just fill out your lineup. At that point, I'm like, okay, how do I fill out this lineup without using cheap nets? And I'm like, okay, Horton Tucker for 3,400. Batum for 4,600 and Cantor for 5,400. And then there you go. They projected well enough. It's not like THT projected well, but still better than the garbage players, right? Batum, even before George was out, projected better than the garbage players and same for Cantor, right? On a five-game slate, my my threshold for how how well they project is going to be be lower. But though, that that there you go. And I didn't use a tool for this. I That's how I put my line. But I'm, I'm looking at projections to see, like, I only want to use a pool of at least decently projected players. I'm not, I wasn't, I wasn't going to play, you know, the third guys off the bench or anything for, for value, especially when we had cheap nets already at value, pseudo value. But I mean, the cheap nets weren't all that much better than THT or Batum or, or any of these other guys. Hernan Gomez wasn't that much better. 